So, Wendy, can you tell me about uh, the panel that you're uh, you're taking at the DSA conference and uh, your hopes for the conference in general? I've really enjoyed the conference so far because it's been there's been a clash of opinions on a number of subjects, and we're very friendly in dealing with those. And our panel is like that; that it's called the old and the new institutionalisms. It's not only me, but with Jana Negru, the two of us have put together about seven papers. And when we got here, we realised there were actually a few others on the same topic. And the old and the new institutions, or new institutionalisms, is sort of brands of economics within the subdivision of economics that looks at social institutions. So on the on the new side, you have people like Joe Stiglitz. He's really famous, and and has a long track record of writing about institutions. And that brand of institutionalism is called usually new institutionalism, and it's it's very similar to standard economics. And you could have a mathematical model, you could have equilibria. And I, I've spent 20 years trying to find other ways to do economics that didn't require mathematical models. Um, I can do them, you know, but the brand of institutionalism that I'm interested in is called the old institutionalism because in 1910 and in, in previous decades there were people who became what we now call sociologists, um, but like Thorsten Veblen. Veblen wrote the book about conspicuous consumption. And in this book, he's told about how the status that we attach to consumption is actually socially constructed. And he was one of the first people to write about the social construction of our feelings and our, our norms, what we consider normal, and how that's not just a given. It's not just given that it's good to have a limo. Mm. You know, my child thinks it is good to have a limo to go for a party. Oh, they got a limo. But that's construed as being luxury, and luxury is construed as representing your wealth. And even if you're poor, you can take part in a wealthy habit of consumption and sort of pretend and get pleasure and status from that. And Viblin was very sarcastic about this and very questioning. And so we now call this reflexivity. That is when we say, well, we have a norm in society, an, inst an institutionalized norm in India that we're, my paper is about, is child labor. So the child's going out to work when it's 13, the same age as my child. Mm -hmm. And they're going out to work maybe before, before they've reached their puberty. But for a girl, when she reaches the menstruation stage, she lose her job but in, in the meantime she's bonded from the age of say 9 to 13 or 14 and then she's thrown back into her family and you know she, it's difficult to, for her to marry because although she's reached puberty she's been away from home as a migrant bonded laborer for years mm. and these you could say these are socially normal things for this young girl to be sent out like that because she's been in public it, it creates some doubts about her um, chastity and her virginity and it's, it doesn't always, but it can be quite damaging for her. And I don't think that's right. It may be normal, but it's not right. So we're doing institutionalism, where you study the norms, and you study them with a questioning attitude about the ethics that are embedded in the normal norms. That's what we're doing. That's lovely. Yeah. Thanks ever so much. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thanks.